video is to document a brief framework of how me and my team seek data from the different space agencies. So if you find yourself in a similar camp, then this may be of use to you. First of all, what you need to do is identify your target. So based on our limited experience, um, some space agencies share more data versus others. And my experience has been that NASA shares a ton of data. Um, we try to access some data from European Space Agency and it requires passwords. So uh, that wasn't very successful. We didn't spend any time here. We didn't spend any time here to date. And um, it doesn't look like the Chinese Space Agency makes any data available. I could be wrong about this. Uh, the same with the Russian Space Agency. So, so far, the odds of looking for data, uh, the probability is more likely that you are going to find the data from NASA, if NASA has had a mission uh, with regards to what your actual target is. So the primary target is to identify the data repository and then you have to, you obviously are looking for some, some kind of a uh, actual target. So the first place you should actually start from, like knowing that you need, to, you're probably gonna have to look for data from uh, the space, uh, government, government funded space agencies. Uh, so the, the, from the preliminary search we do is start with Wikipedia. So I go to Wikipedia and, and try to look for uh, what the uh, missions have been like in the past. And um, here's a list of all the missions to Venus to date. So right off the bat, we can see that there was a flurry of activity uh, during the 60s. Um, obviously, there was a renaissance with the Apollo missions. So uh, that's as many missions we've sent to Venus to date. But it kind of like it was kind of like downhill from there. Um, so the successive decades didn't see as much activity when it comes to missions being sent to Venus. But what we did was uh, we took a look at this data repository. There was another data repository that we looked at, uh, which is the page for uh, the timeline timeline of Venus exploration. So look like the data was quite similar. So what we did was we mapped each one of these missions to uh, these missions, and it looks like. Um, like I said, there was a lot of uh, replication of the data set. Plus, this particular page that we extracted uh, the data from on Wikipedia had some branched or nested uh, rows, which made extraction a little bit kind of like it was a little messy uh, to like kind of clear it out a little bit. So we just after making sure that each one of these missions were indeed on the uh, list of missions that we're looking at. We went ahead and archived that data set because we knew that it's redundant. Next, well, we just applied a filter. Uh, we re recreated the graph by plotting some of the data from Wikipedia. So we don't want to just put a screenshot. Uh, we plotted the graph like, you know, just like just simple stuff, just, um, so there's a visual uh, that I shared earlier on, I just kind of recreate it. I put a link to the actual repository right there. Um, when I was applying the filter, uh, I ended up applying it to row 20. I should have done it here, but it's all well and good. Then before we took out any one of the filters, we made sure that we weren't missing any uh, important information. So let me bring this back again and Instead of just reading out launch failure, we went systematically through each one of the notes or the remarks and looked at, was it in any shape or form, uh, shape or form transmitting any data at all, even if it's for a short duration. So it didn't look like there were any, there was any such thing when it comes to launch failure. So obviously if it failed to launch, it wouldn't be transmitting any data from, um, from near, uh, Venus. Um, and then the other one, we 
weeded out after doing the same thing was spacecraft failure. Again, making sure that it wasn't in orbit uh, for a certain duration and going back to the comments I made. So, so that's what I did next, uh, or we did next. And then we started looking at the successful uh, missions and kind of focused on was it was a flyby, whether it was a lander, whether it was, whether it was an orbiter, so depending on what kind of a mission it is, uh, there's going to be different data sets that the actual mission is going to be beaming back. So, um, so you got to kind of look at the data set and uh, in order for you to be able to glean information like that. It's also important to pay attention to uh, the, the lifetime of the mission. So I uh, think we should include another column on Wikipedia whereby there's a launch date and then there is a uh, kind of like mission end date and there's the actual duration that the uh, mission or craft or uh, land or whatever it is was transmitting the data for because that is useful uh, if you're looking for like data on a trend line or for a longer duration. So we noticed that the Pioneer mission in particular was um, first of all it was uh, a atmospheric uh, probe and it's been it was uh, uh, sorry uh, Pioneer 1 on, on Pioneer Venus 2 and uh, it looks like this was operational for a good 14 years so this would seem like a logical place where at least I'd want to spend more time on because this uh, orbiter potentially was transferring data for a long duration. So I haven't like done an exhaustive uh, kind of exploration of each one of these missions that were, were barely scraping the surface. The next thing we kind of came across was just kind of spending a little bit of time on NASA's website was the planetary data system. And I'm not going to spend time talking about the planetary data system. Uh, and how to navigate it. Maybe I'll just do a brief introduction, but there's there's actually something called the Planetary Defense, uh, sorry, Planetary Data System School, which I'm not sure if they're actually affiliated with NASA, but they have two very useful videos that you see up on your screen. And how I came across these two videos was to just search for the word NASA Planetary Data System. And if you do that search, then that's the first link that comes up. And if you go to their YouTube page, which was what I was showcasing. Uh, you want to spend time uh, watching each one of these videos because it has all the right information for you to navigate through the system. And uh, within 10, 10 minutes or less, you can be up and running with regards to what PDS is and how you can put it to use. And so, uh, yeah, so. Basically, we went to PDS and went to data search, and then we uh, kind of focused on the mission we're looking at. Once you focus on the mission, you click on the mission link. Now, an important thing to highlight about uh, the PDS system is that, let me see if I can bring this up. Uh, So the PDS system, oh, sorry, this background. Uh, there's like the official PDS system, the way I understand it, and then there are nodes and sub nodes, as this screenshot from the PDS schools uh, video highlights. So the nodes and sub nodes are all the way from uh, sub agencies like JPL or SETI to even things like. Uh, each one of the so a couple of universities have their own uh, planetary data system uh, sub nodes, and um, so when you're searching on the NASA's website, I don't know if their searches extend to this as well. So you might have to do individual searches here because uh, they have their own. I've I've been I've spent a fair bit of time on University of Arizona's uh, website. And they have some stunning image imagery from the high-rise system. You can barely see it here, but the images 
that they've been making available for at least 15, 10 years for sure or more uh, are stunning. I've, I've never seen images from Mars uh, in such detail, unlike the images that the University of Arizona to high rise. So what I'm saying is it's not just images. There's like tons of other data of different types and it may be uh, sitting on some on sub node somewhere. Uh, in terms of the file types, it's important to highlight uh, looks like each one of the like you haven't like started playing with the data yet but the data has uh, a label and then there's the actual data itself so when you're looking at the different um, file formats uh, then it's something for you to make uh, sense of information is also on the PDS website and you can use different softwares to open up this data which we haven't done a lot we'll be just using the native tools if they are available on NASA's website it looks like you can make your own tools as well Coming back to PDS, uh, in order to be able to get more information about each one of the missions. So when I click on this one, it does look like this opens up in a sub-repository. So this one is obviously from University of California, LA, uh, or UCLA. And uh, if, like on this page, um, if when you go to these videos, you'll understand how, how to navigate through the structure. But this is where the meat of the content is. and so. On the left, you have a navigation system, and same here. And the right, you have information and pictures about the each one of the missions. So then they categorize where the what kind of data is available. So if I click on just this one, for example, then you will notice that this is not certified. Um, it's, a, it's like some kind of process to certify the data. This one is not certified, but uh, the data is still here. These quick links point, point to the data sets within these repositories. So I can click here or I can click here interchangeably. I'll just click here for now. And then on this page, you have the data. And if you choose to, you can download the data using this particular link. Uh, some of the data sets also give you the ability to be able to view the data right there. So this in a nutshell is how you navigate through um, this, this is my process of um, uh, so far, uh, based on uh, some time spent on the different repositories. So just to recap, in a nutshell, first, identify your target. Uh, who, what is it that you're targeting? So start with a search and uh, narrow down the list of missions that you uh, want to look at. So once you have that information off of Wikipedia or another repository, then uh, look at the patterns. Look at the patterns within this data set uh, whereby uh, you, you want to increase the probability of uh, going to the right data set. You could, you could, like we started with a whole bunch of um, like, like search strings and um, we were just running searches initially through uh, uh, through Google. So uh, you know, uh, we, we were starting to, we were going through the different uh, websites and then uh, we found out that there's something called PDS. And, uh, you know, these are some of the search strings we were using. Uh, so looking for particular words, then providing, uh, like making Google only search at NASA and eliminating HQ news because it was coming up a lot, a lot of news items. We didn't want news items. We wanted to hone in on the target. So you got to use particular search strings uh, in order to be able to narrow down your search as well because there's so much out there. When you search for something on Google, Google is just an, in, like a massive indexer. So it's bringing everything back. So um, but anyway, so yeah, that's a note on the site. Uh, doing those targeted searches eventually led us to PDS. Before that, we had no idea something like PDS existed. And PDS is, looks like that's where we should be spending our time. PDS or something like this. You know, hopefully ESA and the other space agencies have an equivalent of something like PDS. But yeah, so anyways, so to recap, de determine what is it that you're looking for, narrow down your list of options, spend a little bit of time like familiarizing yourself with the data, initial data set that is in front of you. Look for the patterns, look for the patterns which would increase the probability that something within that data says is where you should be spending your time. 
we weren't looking for uh, PDS, like I said, when we started. But noticing that there were uh, missions that had gone on for 14 years, there's a very high probability that uh, something like that, that data set was stored somewhere. So knowing that, we then, um, oh, by the way, we also documented current missions and missions under study. Anyway, so knowing that um, and doing more targeted searches, we were able to get to PDS and I've shared everything else. So hopefully this saves anyone who's watching this time. Uh, we spent a couple of hours going around in circles till we actually uh, realized uh, where we need to be. We also asked around. Uh, I had a contact at ESA, so they were able to point me to the right website uh, for ESA. But uh, not picking favorites, but so far we've been able to, to get more data from NASA. Uh, or it looks like there's more data available through NASA. Uh, okay, so if you have any comments, please let me know. Thanks.